Hi, this is Corey with Norfolk Bike Commuter. I'm here today with Liz Pace. She is a member of Norfolk's Tree Commission and she's a resident of the Larchmont neighborhood. We're in Larchmont today. And uh, Liz, where, where are we specifically? We are actually at the Triangle Dog Park, which is a very small park around here in the neighborhood, but it has a lot of use. We get, we get neighbors from all over who bring their dogs, they play Frisbee. Um, we have kids that come out here and also play. It's a very active location. It's great. Now you wanted to talk to me today about a proposed traffic light that's going to be installed at Hampton Boulevard and Jamestown Crescent. Why would we start here to have that discussion? Well, as you can see, this is a very quiet neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We do have over there, you can see there it's a family with kids. Mm -hmm. We have an individual on the bench over there because people come to enjoy getting away from the city. Yeah. And so the concern I have with the lights that are to be coming in is not proposed. It actually was approved um, by city council. And these lights will have a two minute light cycle. And this happened about eight years ago. We had a light that was two minutes long. Mm -hmm. People don't want to wait for a light. Everyone's in a hurry today. And so what they'll do is they'll cut through the neighborhood. And we have kids that ride their bikes on the roads here. We have people with baby carriages that are on the road. Mm -hmm. um, people don't really use the sidewalk. It's just not as smooth as the road. Mm -hmm. And so my concern is this excess traffic, and there's a lot of it. We have just on Jamestown Crescent alone, we have 77 hundred vehicles that go down mm -hmm. Jamestown Crescent a day. And that road is right there. And that is going to cause some of the, the, the light is going to cause that traffic to come through. And that's what we don't want. So you ultimately see this as a cyclist and pedestrian safety issue. Yes. And what we're going to do is explore some of the streets here in Larchmont leading up to the intersection of Hampton Boulevard and Jamestown Crescent and dig a little bit deeper into why this uh, approved, not just proposed, but approved stoplight could be troublesome for the neighborhood. Uh, we're walking down Jamestown Crescent now towards Hampton Boulevard. And one thing I wanted to point out and talk a little bit to Liz about is this particular stretch of road, and we're on the sidewalk now, but even over the, the road itself, there's a good amount of tree cover, which uh, is really beneficial to, I would say, cyclists and pedestrians yes. as far as even drivers perhaps, in keeping the street cooler and uh, potentially serving as some rain cover. But uh, Liz, what do you think the significance of having things like a tree canopy over our streets and roads is? Well, first of all, having trees in general are important because their roots will suck up excess water, which is what we definitely need in the city, especially when we have all these, these rain showers. Um, but Trees are known to provide a cooling effect. We have some areas here in the city that are heat islands. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the Tree Commission wants to do is to start planting trees in those communities mm -hmm. um, and educate the people on how to take care of the trees. Because a lot of folks feel that a tree is messy, mm -hmm. but the tree has so much value if they would just be educated on what to do with having the trees, <laughs> um, but here, I just love this. And this gives you the, the shade, and it, especially on these hot days. Mm -hmm. um, the one problem that we do have in the city are the wires that mm -hmm. um, can interfere with keeping the tree um, healthy when it grows up. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, I hope you're capturing it on the camera, because it is, it's just beautiful. This is one reason why people will walk I mean, they walk their dogs, they go walking in the evenings um, or even in the late afternoon because it's not as hot with all the tree coverage. Right. And even during the middle of the day, if you have that shade and that tree coverage specifically, not just shade, but the fact that it is something that's sort of living and breathing, it, uh, mm -hmm. it helps. It does. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, you see on Jamestown Crescent where they have the parking blocks. Mm -hmm. That is something that is new, newish, and it was put in um, so that folks wouldn't block the driveways. But mm -hmm. actually, what it has done 
it creates a bit of a calming uh, measure mm -hmm. for the traffic because people psychologically think they can't go over that side of the road mm -hmm. so that the road shrinks in size and then people don't want to go too fast because they have less road to cover. It's an mm -hmm. interesting psychological um, technique. And that's something that I would like to see done on Hampton Boulevard, mm -hmm. some way of having a, tra a traffic calming measure mm -hmm. um, because our biggest issue on Hampton is speeding. Mm -hmm. With all these vehicles coming down, these are the vehicles that aren't going to wait for a light. Mm -hmm. And these are the cars that are going to start cutting through the neighborhood streets. I just want to point that out. And so your primary concern is this light at Hampton Boulevard and Jamestown Crescent is going to motivate people who don't want to wait for it to cut through these otherwise quiet, safe streets. Right. And the roads are, for the most part, on the narrow side. In fact, generally, I don't see it today. Well, maybe over there. You see that white pickup truck, mm -hmm. uh, he's parked on the verge because he doesn't want to be sideswiped. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the vehicles were parked on top of the curb mm -hmm. because if you have two vehicles parked and then a truck's coming by, you get sideswiped and right. that's the problem. And so we don't want to have more of that happening through these side roads. Right. Now, generally, the, the narrower a road, the slower people drive. Yes. That's, uh, that's the impact of having obstacles. It forces people to think. It forces people to assess as opposed to wider lanes that sort of give them the green light to go as fast as they feel comfortable going. Why do you think the city wants to put this light in? Well, originally, uh, we were told that it would reduce speeding. But unfortunately, that is not supported by the Virginia Department of Transportation. Um, they have a crash report mm -hmm. that anyone can download, and I did. I went into the system and I looked at all the different um, collisions that have occurred in this area mm -hmm. and the reason for them. Now, there's always a perception that something is going to be worse than it could be until you look at the data. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that the city looked at the data to the detail to find out what the root causes of these issues were. Mm -hmm. And what did you find? Well, I found out that the majority of the issues are um, related to bad driving behavior. Mm -hmm. you know, people should not be intoxicated when they're driving. Um, they need to be a certain distance behind the vehicle in front. Mm -hmm. um, they need not to be on their cell phone when they're driving. Uh, those were the majority of the issues. Mm -hmm. We do have a few where people decided that they wanted to make a left turn on a three-lane road, three lane road yeah. and didn't see a, a vehicle. And that, again, is a driver error. So having to duck and weave yeah. through the beautiful, beautiful <laughs> trees. It is beautiful and they smell so good. They do. You almost want them to hit you in the face yeah. just so you get a nose full. So again, this is the, right now it's um, after, it's, it's around the dinner hour. And mm -hmm. so we don't have as much traffic on the road. If we did, probably couldn't hear me talking. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious because the, the, the uh, microphones that we're using do have some sound canceling properties to them. I'm curious if you can pick up just how noisy the traffic is going past, because otherwise this would be serene. It, it'd be quiet. It's not cities that are necessarily loud. It's, it's not even people going back and forth because you could walk or cycle just about as quietly as we're doing right now. It's the cars that are loud. Right, right. Especially when they have the stereos. Bumping. True, sometimes the muffler. Yeah. yeah, this is a neighborhood street. I mean, I, I make the same point when I talk about Hampton Boulevard or, or any other street, at least what should be properly called a street in the city, where if you have people who live on it, you have driveways, you have life mm -hmm. going on on it, it shouldn't be a primary thoroughfare. Right. Or if it is a thoroughfare of some kind, it should be slow enough to where it is safe 
for people to access it, to live in and around it. We've had a lot of construction happening on Hampton Boulevard with the bridge. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that our community has learned is we can survive with two lanes. Mm -hmm. We have three lanes. And so if we can survive with two lanes, because we have for a long time, why don't we do something with that third lane? Mm -hmm. And that's where I think allowing folks who want to ride their bikes, that is the area that we could do it. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense to me. We need to get rid of the excess vehicles. Mm -hmm. And if we have people who want to ride their bikes to work, and we are such a, a densely populated city mm -hmm. that things are generally close, yeah. then it makes sense to me to do something on Hampton Boulevard. It is the main thoroughfare from the Naval Base to downtown. Mm -hmm. And we don't have three lanes at, at every section of Hampton. But at a minimum, you have two. Right. But we don't need three lanes here. And so I, I think if I were, if I felt safe enough to ride, and I don't, I don't feel safe enough to ride in the, the streets here. Mm -hmm. I feel safe on the Elizabeth River Trail. Mm -hmm. And that's where I do ride, or I ride around my neighborhood, at least I do now. But if we have a lot of vehicles cutting through my neighborhood, I'll mm -hmm. be going to the Elizabeth River Trail only. Right. And you'll be ducking and weaving again. Careful. And you'll be forced to, if you want to ride your bike, this relatively short distance. I mean, from here to, I mean, from here to the ERT is only a couple hundred feet, it's but just, yeah. from where we currently are to Jeff Robertson Park is two miles tops? Probably, yeah, not much more than that. And yet for you to get there and feel comfortable doing so, you would put uh, your bike in the car and, uh, and drive. Right, I would have to drive there, which is ridiculous actually. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Liz and I are on the corner of Hampton Boulevard and Hanover Avenue to discuss where the city plans on putting this stoplight. So the city is actually going to put in five stoplights. They're going to put one here on Hanover Avenue, which is a very narrow road. Mm -hmm. They're going to put a second one at Richmond Crescent. You can see where those two cars are parked. You can barely get, you can get one car through, but it gets very tight there. Right. They're going to put a light Hampton Boulevard going south, mm -hmm. Hampton Boulevard going north, and where this motorcycle is coming, they're going to put a light further back on Jamestown Crescent. So there'll be five lights, which is a lot for this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, of course, the lights are going to be a two minute plus cycle, mm -hmm. because they're also going to put in a pedestrian walkway mm -hmm. here. So it's a it's a very busy area for a pedestrian to want to cross, quite honestly, when we have other locations that are much uh, less uh, involved with a secondary street because Jamestown is a uh, more of an artery for mm -hmm. the neighborhood than these narrow um, secondary streets. So Now, you were telling me a little earlier about the total traffic on Hampton Boulevard and how that relates to the traffic that winds up on Jamestown Crescent. Can you cover that again? Yes, well, Hampton Boulevard has generally about 38,000 cars that travel down every day. Mm -hmm. And some of that traffic is going to go on Jamestown Crescent. And some of the Jamestown Crescent traffic is also going to merge into Hampton Boulevard. So if you have a two minute light, this traffic, it's going to go through the neighborhood streets to avoid the light. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. And you can see that's going to be a lot of traffic coming through. Um, the other thing is, you think 38,000 cars a day is a lot of traffic, and it is. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of speeding here, but the problem is the traffic light cannot stop people from speeding. Right. People actually go through a red light. Mm -hmm. uh, I think 4% of the vehicles on 
the VDOT report, the Virginia Department of Transportation report that I downloaded, showed that 4% of vehicles just blew through a red light anyway. The problems of Hampton Boulevard are well known. I've outlined them through Norfolk Bike Commuter, but this project highlights the issues that aren't being addressed with Hampton Boulevard, namely that it's being used as a primary thoroughfare when realistically it's a neighborhood street. And you would think, well, we probably need all these lights for that volume mm. of traffic. But actually, the lights can cause more accidents mm -hmm. because people don't want to wait for a light. Right. And that's what we've noticed on the lights further down. We mm -hmm. have light Magnolia, light at Bowling, we have light at Lexon. And people are trying to beat the light. So what they do is they follow somebody closely, mm -hmm. the car ahead decides maybe they'll stop, and then they have a rear end collision. And this is what the VDOT data that's what shows. the VDOT data shows. And you've corroborated this data with the city? Yes, actually, uh, we met with John Stevenson, who is the traffic director, mm -hmm. about two weeks ago. And we compared his data with the data that I pulled. Mm. My data actually has more detail than his data because there was a change made to VDOT. And I happened to pull the data in time to mm -hmm. capture some of that extra detail, which was really helpful. Mm -hmm. But I had all the document numbers that matched his document numbers, so we knew we were talking about the same thing. Got it. So, yeah. so. so you see that rabbit over there? When I lived here, when we had the original lights on Jamestown Crescent, we didn't have any wildlife. But now we have rabbits, we have well, some wildlife maybe we don't want, <laughs> but I like all wildlife. Mm -hmm. But it's just, to me, it's... it's. And you think that's a function it, of the traffic or the lack thereof? Well, I think it is because um, it's quieter and they're not scared off by vehicles or they're not run over. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, when I lived here before, dogs roamed on their own. Mm -hmm. And of course, today people walk their dogs, but I saw a dog get run over by my house. Mm -hmm. And that was really upsetting. And so I'm sure that a rabbit or you know, another wildlife um, critter could get killed by sure. a fast vehicle. Here back in the 60s and 70s, Norfolk was so different. Mm -hmm. It was very polluted. Uh, the river used to have yellow foam. Mm. You used to have a couple of shoes floating around and a few dead fish. Not good. And now it's uh, I can actually see through a few inches, which is pretty exciting. And there was uh, a dolphin that was out there. Mm -hmm. So it really has changed immensely in that regard. Absolutely. Earlier we were talking about alternatives to driving, people needing cars, people perhaps even having multiple cars. You think if Norfolk invested more in its bicycle infrastructure, uh, perhaps even in its public transportation network that people wouldn't need cars and that parking requirement, as it were, would be a moot point? I think it would be very effective to have some type of safe, and I really underline that, some type of separation in the road. I'd like to see some type of wall because I don't want someone who's distracted to bump into me if I'm riding on, on my bike. Right. And we have scooters today, we have mm -hmm. the, those Lime scooters. We have the electric bikes that I see out there. Um, people really want to be outside. Mm -hmm. We've got the climate that allows us to enjoy being outdoors. And we don't want to pay the money for the gas right. also. So we have the opportunity to save money, enjoy the outdoors, um, save our planet from more pollution. So there's a lot of benefit to that. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, the average age in Norfolk is 30. Mm -hmm. So we have a young generation that appreciates the outdoors more than the older generation does. Mm -hmm. Or the older generation just never understood that, that need. That average is probably so low given the city's military population. Yes, that's true. That, that is true. Um, but I do think that if we were forward thinking and we were to create an environment that allowed folks to be able to use the type of transportation that they want to use in a safe manner, I think it would reduce all the parking issues that we have downtown. Mm -hmm. um, 
it would increase safety because there's so many cars when you're walking, you're not sure if somebody who's in a car that's moving sure. can see you if there's a parked car next to you. So yeah, blind it, uh, spots. Right. So it, um, I think it would make a huge difference. So Liz, where do you think Norfolk's priority should lie as far as its transportation network and as far as what choices it makes with trees, landscaping, infrastructure, and the ways people choose to get around the city? I would like to have the city work as a whole and see what kind of plans we can do for the entire city, first of all. Uh, find out where our problem areas are, deal with that first. Mm -hmm. I would love to have a way of separating the traffic, the car traffic, from the bike traffic. I'd love to have a tree barrier. That mm -hmm. would be my number one wish. Um, I don't know enough of how that could work, but I think that there's a lot of potential in that. The other thing, I don't understand when we build something new in Norfolk, why is the building so close to the street? Mm -hmm. I never understood that. When we could have it pushed back and then we can gain more space for uh, bike riders or walkers and share that land with the rest of the people. I, I also think it'd be great to have a survey done mm -hmm. to find out what do the people want because if you don't find out what the people want, then you can't plan it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think we're, we just kind of stay with the status quo, and that's not where we need to be. I agree. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. You've <laughs> okay. answered all of my questions. Liz, thank you so much for joining me today. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. It was a pleasure.